Hey guys, Tori Boggs here. I get this question all the time about which shoe is best to jump rope in. So today we are at the Brooks Running Trailhead store here in Seattle, Washington, where I'll not only talk about things that I look for in a jump rope shoe, but we're gonna hear from an expert on what to look for as well. Obviously, I'm a really big fan of Brooks Running and have been partnering with them for a while, but I really just wanna help you guys find what's the best jump rope shoe that's gonna work for you. So let's jump right into it. jump around the store. All right, so I'm here with Michael Eaton, who's the manager of the Brooks Running Trailhead store, and he's gonna really take us through how I'm gonna find which shoe is best for me. So tell us what we're gonna do. All right, yeah, uh, we're gonna do our run signature, which is our um, like custom Brooks style of fitting a shoe. So we're gonna get you on the treadmill with some straps, some sensors, and this cool app that our uh, scientists upstairs have designed is basically gonna look for these subtle little movement patterns, or maybe not so subtle, depending on how your legs move. Okay. Um, and uh, basically it's gonna help us determine neutral shoe, support shoe, and then we can really get into the more fine-tuned details of like what that means for you individually and what shoe means, or what shoe will then be the perfect match for you. Perfect, and I gotta run though, I can't jump rope on this one. Right? No, no, <laughs> I have never seen a jump rope on treadmill. We could try it maybe after the test, yeah. but uh, I don't know how it would affect your results if we did it during, so. <laughs> I'm gonna attach the straps, like that person in the video there. I'm gonna pull this fairly snug so it doesn't fall off while you're running, because it falls off during the test. We have to start over. All right, and then you can step up onto the belt for me. And these markers here have reflective 3M like tape or paint on them. And basically this is what the camera catches when we're running. Um, so face me real quick. So one goes over your knee, one goes on the front of your shin, and then turn around for me. One goes on the back of the calf, and then this last one here, I have some tape and we're gonna stick it so we're gonna start by taking video from the front, video from the back, and then we'll reverse it and do your run from the back, run from the front. So it'll take like 90 seconds, it's not that long. Three, four, and five. Almost done. Good. So this first little blob here, or running in Eva, is from the knee bends that we initially did. So we're looking at how So we're looking at knee shift, shin rotation, foot roll or pronation, and heel shift or heel rotation. So again, these movements are just how you're moving. They're not good or bad by themselves. They're just how we recorded um, during the test. So average knee shift, average shin rotation, average foot roll, a little bit of uh, more exaggerated heel rotation or heel movement that it saw, but we'll see how it changes or doesn't change when we compare it to your run. Okay. So that's the, what we just did. So when I click that button, this dotted yellow line that you can see there or see here is how those movements adjusted when you started running. So a little bit of deviation is normal because we're now putting way more force on the body now that we're running. You know, like think about it, we're now putting all that body weight impacting into the body. So this doesn't really account for much growth at all. So your knee shift stayed about the same. We saw a little bit of growth in shin rotation, but not so much that they're concerned. A really solid thing is that your foot roll or pronation stayed identical to your baseline and your heel rotation actually decreased a little bit. So overall, because the shift wasn't too great in any of these areas, they're recommending neutral shoes for you. All right, so we found that I am looking for a neutral shoe, but we did that by running, which did tell us a lot of really kind of interesting in information, but um, this, has, this has to apply for jump rope. So I'm looking for a shoe to jump in. So how is that gonna work? <laughs> All right, well, I guess the question is, runners and jump ropers are probably looking for specific things in their shoes when they're, um, when they're doing their activity. So for a runner, I'd ask them, what category or what style of shoe would you like? So I'm gonna ask you as a jump roper, what are you usually looking for in a shoe? Like how lightweight or flexible, what are the things you're looking for? Yeah, I, I'm normally focusing on like the flexibility of the shoe, the response that it's gonna give me, the arch support, and then kind of like the stability, the overall stability that's coming with the shoe. And I, I mean like weight will play into that a bit. I don't want something too light, but also definitely not too heavy either. So 
conveniently, you just listed off characteristics and features of some of, of two of our categories of running shoes that already exist. Okay. So we can probably find a shoe there that works for what you're looking for. So the first thing I noticed you said responsive. Um, and you're also jump roping, so you're bouncing, you're jumping a lot. So probably responsive and springy are things you would really like. So we have this whole energized category that has shoes like the Levitate and the Rebel that are literally designed to be that responsive springy shoe that's good for um, running, but also for jumping, bounding, leaping, that kind of stuff. Another great thing about this category is they all are eight millimeter offsets. So that means your heel is only eight millimeters higher than your forefoot. So you're on a much more level pro plane than you would be in one of the shoes that's maybe a little bit more stacked and like the heels higher. Um, so what that's gonna do is provide you a more stable platform for your feet to like land on, or if you're cutting right or left, it's gonna be a little bit more stable than something that's like super soft and super high stacked. So, so I mean, this looks pretty good. I'm gonna wait to have it on and feel it, but something like that maybe collapses in on itself is, is something I'm specifically trying to avoid yeah. for like those reasons. So the nice thing about our knit style upper on the Revel and the Levitate is that we do, you see how there's a little bit of like a crossed pattern here. So it's not just one solid thing. So we reinforce that by basically creating like a crossed weave pattern that reinforces this area right around the midfoot, which is what you want, where you want the shoe to really hold you in place. Um, but if you are concerned about that, like this and this style would be better than something like the Stealth Fit, which is a little bit stretchier like and more soft. giving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. and this is also, this is more of like our traditional mess, but they have, you see they do that same reinforcement. And then that bit of like um, 3D printed on upper material is also designed to kind of wrap the foot and hold it in that mid foot position, so. Oh, yeah. let's, uh, let's try some shoes on. Perfect, let's yeah. jump around. Also, I get, I get the question a lot about like, high top shoes and what I feel about them. I actually, at some point, did go through like a trying out wrestling shoes phase that were coming above my ankle a bit. And although I get the appeal to like prevent ankle rolling, especially when you are cutting and moving a lot, I find that it's actually detrimental as far as like muscle activation and developing the important muscles that you need for stabilization. So a lot of people that are wearing them aren't properly developing that and actually end up with weaker ankles than you know, before not wearing the high tops. And I find that jump rope is also a really great way to develop those stabilizing muscles. Uh, we have to jump rope in them. Otherwise, you know, what's the point? That's <laughs> the best way to try it out. So, let me grab my rope. Do I have enough room or you wanna? Oh, this is fine. Okay. Is this okay? <laughs> I mean, these feel pretty good. Next year. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, I actually feel like a big difference with the upper right now. Yeah. So I know, like, my concern is once again with like cutting or moving side to side. Yeah. They feel pretty stable. I think it's one of those things where like I'll be in the middle of a jump rope session after like you know a lot of time spent moving around them, and then I would be able to really tell the difference. Yeah. But yeah, they fit really like a glove. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I really like the style of this shoe too, and the feel of it. Yeah, that two extra mil four foot cushion is probably pretty nice for what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. Man, I love shoes. So, tried a lot of shoes on today, learned a lot about how my body works and uh, what to look for in a shoe from an expert, which is really cool. I think the Revels are one of my favorite shoes. I found I've, I've spent a lot of time in this shoe, but I think today I gotta choose the launches. They have a really great responsiveness. They felt super nice on my foot, so I'm excited to take them outside, uh, jump rope, and uh, get them going. Let's get some skills in. Actually, I'm gonna take them all with me. <laughs> Presented by Brooks Running. <laughs>